Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing all, well, all of the Ranger's Apprentice books, including the Brother Band series. Um, I know a new one's out right now, and I might get to that one later, but for now, this, these are all the ones I have, and I'll see how it goes. So let's take a trip down memory lane, shall we? And the goal of this video is not only to review every individual book on a scale of 1 to 10, but to also review, like, every, um overarching story like on a scale of 1 to 10. So these first two books, the early years or the prequel to the Ranger's Apprentice series, I'd call them an art overarching story and if you want to include the lost stories, like one story that revolves around the beginning of the Tournament of Gorlan, then you can include that too. But essentially I'd rate Tournament at Gorlan maybe a 7 out of 10 because to be honest I was expecting more from Tournament out of Gorlan tournament at Gorland, my bad and it was a very it was a very nice introduction into like the conflict at hand because it felt very star wars-esque like you had rangers who were trying to set up a rebellion against morgrath who was the big dark lord trying to gain his hand at um taking over arluin and yet nothing happened too much for like regarding the climax of the book uh, I liked some parts of it, like some aspects of it, it's just that sometimes it felt slow, but I get that in the sense that it's gonna lead up to the really, one of my, uh, top favorite books in the Ranger's Apprentice series, The Battle of the Hackham Heath, and this book surprised me just because of how, um, how into the action it was, and how this book really described the entirety of the Arluin War between, um, Morgarath and the King. And this was one of my favorite books just because it talked about the little intricacies like the battles, the tactics, the planning, and like how everything kind of collided at the Battle of Hackham Heath. Yet, it's not like my, it's not my favorite book. There are some, it has some things that could, that are left to be desired. Like, uh, it is some, it is slow in the beginning of the book. Like, I was not reading this also at the best of times. I was really sick during reading this. That might have hindered my um, review of this, but this book felt slow in the beginning, but it picked up pace immediately halfway through the book as soon as the king sent her uh, his wife away. I'm not gonna get too into too many spoilers here, but yeah, this book I'd say is about an eight out of 10. And yeah, that's the first series. That's the, um, our, the early year series and you know overall as a story arc i'd say the this first series was um pretty good chronologically in the release date wise this is not his first series by the way it's just the first series that comes in both series both brother band and rangers apprentice but yeah i'd say this series is pretty de this like ar overarching story is pretty decent uh, it does kind of play into the first and second book of Ranger's Apprentice, but I won't include that because I feel like this series is really Halt's story and Crowley's story as they um, fight off Morgrath and his troops. And it was nice. It was nice knowing a little backstory to Morgrath because Ranger's Apprentice, you just kind of got a really quick delve into Morgrath as his character is really showing as this like oh evil overarching dark lord and you know he was intimidating when i was a kid uh when i was reading the second book of ranger's apprentice and uh, but yeah he it kind of left something to be desired like oh how did he get this much power in the first place and these books really explained that well and i like that aspect of these books so yeah um final rating for this series i'd say eight out of ten seven out of ten for the tournament at Gorlan, and eight out of ten for the battle of hackham heath but the whole series overall is eight out of ten all right these first four books when you're dealing with um the morgrath conflict and then right after that um the conflict with will being kidnapped by uh scandians right these first four books are pretty uh they're pretty good. They were all pretty solid, actually. Um, and a lot of people hate on Icebound Land, but I'll I'll get to that later. Um, first off, The Ruins of Gorland. It was a very good book, like, when I was a kid. It was very good for the younger audience. And mind you, each book of this series, as you, as the series gets, um, as each book increases in, like, page length, and each book does also increase in maturity, too. Like, uh... He doesn't show it, but Flanagan's an excellent kids author. 
and he but he still makes it entertaining for like young adult readers to read these books and people who are interested interested in world building and history in general because he's excellent at writing weapons and like stories uh fights large overcasting uh armies i don't know what i just said but anyways yeah i I'm, you can see him flustered because i really really like these books and i don't like hating on them but anyways um ranger's apprentice the ruins of gorland from a critical standpoint i'd say this one would be like it's not you see it's it's actually a really well-paced book and it's kind of similar to brother band in the sense that he's training and they don't show him in this process like will training or hal training in brother band as much as they do in the other books and it's really unique take on these on the first book and it makes it unique from the any other book in the series because right after this book you get like self-contained conflicts overarching conflicts conflicts that kind of you just get into right away but this book was not only a good introduction into the world of ranger's apprentice and arlun in general but into will's character and you know this book i give it less credit for than it's due it made a really Flanagan made a really good arc for um, Horace and how he became, like in the mid beginning of this book, I really hated Horace, <laughs> but later he, after, right after this book and the second book, he was one of my favorite characters in, like of all time. And the arc that he created in this book is really well done. So I'd say this book is a solid eight out of 10. Um, might even be a nine out of 10, but it's just so, entry level and John Flanagan has written better stuff than this that I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Um, the Burning Bridge, my favorite book like of the Rangers Apprentice series all time and a lot of people are gonna flack me for that one because I just when I read this book I don't know whether it was the timing of me reading this book but I really wanted something that escalated into this really big battle and you know a lot of people were disappointed with how slow this book was or whatnot I loved it all. I love the build up to the uh, final battle where Horace um, fights Morgrath, and I was so surprised when I was a kid when he actually kills Morgrath and he beats him, and that was such a great moment for me personally. I this is my favorite book in the series, but in general, I get I understand the criticism and I do understand that this book does have its problems too. But like like I said, every Flanagan book is really there is no every Flanagan book is has a certain standard that you can't like it's so good all of these books are really good and it's hard to express how much I love these books but The Burning Bridge even though it's my favorite I'll give it a 7 out of 10 because I do understand I have reread it many times over and although it has some of my favorite moments in the series it has a lot of its problems with the slow build up to those moments it's a lot of really predictable stuff in the beginning and near the end but yeah, now on to Icebound Land. Icebound Land was really surprising to me as a kid, and it was really depressing. Like, this was the first time Flanagan went into the territory of um, commentating on, like, modern-day stuff, like drugs and whatnot. And he really did that in a nice way, too. He made sure that he dealt with it appropriately. He showed... He made me... When I was a kid, he made me scared of, <laughs> like, drugs. That's amazing, coming from a book of set in medieval times that's in a fictional world that and it was so amazing to me it's amazing to, to me even now that i don't have the words for it i don't have the words for a lot of things but this thing i don't have the words for this book was amazing i feel like a lot of people give it more flack than it deserves yeah it does have its problems and it does have its um shortcomings but like i said it's kind of slow the, co the conflict between uh, Horace, Fault, and the other guy, I don't even remember his name actually, that's how forgettable he was, uh, what's his name, what's his name, what's his name, and it's not on the back, that's how important he was, um, yeah, but the conflict between Horace, Fault, and the other guy they were supposed to fight, that wasn't really too interesting, and it wasn't an interesting divulgent, what was interesting was how Horace was building his name, as a knight and a dueler in general that was very um well done in my opinion and the way halt created this myth about the sun warrior that was cool uh the moments between will and evelyn i i might be completely butchering her name i'm so sorry yeah i'm pretty sure it's evelyn but 
I don't know, I've been saying it one way throughout my entire life. If I see people like bashing me for it, then sure, I made a mistake. But yeah, the way he portrays um, that relationship, I really liked it. It was really friendly, it was really um, nice. And I like that they didn't become romantically um, interested in like into one another because uh, it's nice to show that you can have a platonic relationship <laughs> in a book where you're stuck together and you're kidnapped and you're being taken by Scandians. Yeah, I like that. And I like that she wasn't all heads over heels for him and she could handle herself well. And they didn't point it out too much. They, You see, when you're writing a female character and when you're trying to do it well, I don't know why this has gotten into my head so much and it's been such a bother for me. But I've, I've seen it and I've heard it and I've seen people point out, oh, she's a girl, she can't do that, she can't do this. Like, all right, maybe if you're writing something in a contemporary setting, like, oh, maybe it's for the purpose of doing so, like, uh, if you're writing something in, like, the 50s, right, and, uh, or set in the time of the 50s or even medieval times, then sure, point that out, right? Modern time things, no, I don't think that belongs. I think if women characters, if you want to make them good, you should just have them, you should ha just have them do cool things and you should write them like you would all right now this is a hard statement that you shouldn't write them like you would any other character you should write them like you should write them with correct story arcs in mind and concepts in mind and in the sense that you don't want to have a ray character that does everything and the rules bend to her but you want to have a character like a nedge from uh, six of crows although she does become the damsel in distress at the end but it doesn't matter because she is up until that point she's vulnerable but she has badass moments she has a good story arc and whatnot and um bardugo really or i might be completely butchering that name too bardugo really does well with that with her character and with that conflict and Bardugo also does well with other characters in her books, so you should really read Six of Crows. But yeah, they deal with Evelyn in a similar fashion, so they show, they show her to be a competent female character, and that's good, and I like that. So yeah, Icebound Land, I am born into a rant there, I'm sorry. Icebound Land, I'd say it's a... Uh... See, I don't think it's as good as the first book. I, I, but I think it has. I think it has its shortcomings. But I think it's seven out of ten, like the Burning Bridge. A lot of people might put it six out of ten or five out of ten, or it might might just not even love it at all. They might just like hate it. But I, I think it's. I think it's better than what people give it worth. Now, for the final book in this like overarching story, the Battle for Scandia. This is one of my favorite books. Um. Yeah, honestly, there's not a lot to be said about this book, except it's really, really good, well-made. Uh, he, everything from the past three books really plays into the fourth book. You get introduced to Scandia, like, properly, not like in the Icebound Land, where it's just from the slave's point of view. It's just, you get introduced to the world of Scandia, Scandia, and everything about Scandia. You get introduced to the Timujai conflict which is super interesting, and you get introduced to this, like, one of my favorite battles, the battle for Scandia against the two Mujai, and Halt meets Will again, which is a great moment. This book is full of great moments, and I think since it's a great climax for uh, the first four books of this series, and honestly, he could have ended the series at this point in time, but I, I mean, I'm glad he didn't, but it's a, just a good point. You, if you wanted to, you can stop in the series, and you can just be saying, oh, I'm done, all right. That was a great series. So yeah, Battle of Scandia, I'd say it's a 9 out of 10. Like, honestly, it's really good. And I love these books. Anybody ha anybody can, should read this first four books, at least. Um, even if you're a young adult, I would recommend these highly to you, just because of the writing in these four, first four, four books. Sorry. Uh, a little bit of a throat. <coughs> Something got stuck in my throat. Anyways, uh, yeah. So, I'd rate these four first four books and like I'll, I'll call it the Morgrath Scandian conflict uh I'd rate them eight out of ten solid solid eight out of ten just like the previous early years because the the ruins of Berlin was eight out of ten the burning bridge seven out of ten icebound land seven out of ten the battle of Scandia nine out of ten and yeah thank you Let's get on to the next series. I'm doing book seven first because chronologically in the Rangers Apprentice series, this book comes first. And I'd say it really is, although it's a self-contained conflict, this book is really good. And although it had a slow start for me, 
after when it picked up it picked up like pace and it did, did so in a natural way that i really loved i really loved all the characters in this book it was like the first avengers of rangers apprentice like the first um combined book with all most of the characters that you, you know right and those books in the rangers apprentice series when he has all the characters working together those books are really well done and there are some really good moments in this book really funny moments like uh will's horse race to get tugged back really emotional moments like will losing tug in the first place and really well done moments like evan lynn getting the killing blow on uh, what's his name Has See, I might be completely wrong because I forget most of the villain names besides Morgrath. I'm sorry, I haven't read these books in a while. I mean, I've read seven a lot, actually. It's just I kept on... Slayathan so was a very good addition to the book series. Let me first say that off. And the depiction of the desert society was good. Different tribes was nice. The environment working against the rangers was cool. And yeah, Yusal. All right, I might be completely butchering that name too. Yusal was the villain in this book. He was pretty good. Um, not the best villain Flanagan's ever created, but Flanagan's villains weren't too, um, too, supposed to be too, like, too good. They were just supposed to be, um, Dark Lord entities like, uh, Morgrath and whatnot. And they were just supposed to be evil for the sake of being evil, those types of villains. But, yeah, I liked this book a lot. Um, the conflict was great, the story was great. The ending, the payoff of Will's training and all his years of hard work was amazing. And, yeah, I give this book, I really want to give it a 10 out of 10, but there's a book that does all of this, in my opinion, better later. So I'd give it a 9 out of 10, because it's just really good. <laughs> All right, and moving on to the second, uh, the book series, the two books before that, actually. Um, Sorcerer of the North and the Siege of Massenda. All right, so I have a mixed relationship with these two books. I liked Siege of Massenda, um, the ending bits of it a lot. But before, but I wish it was longer because before that, there was Sorcerer of the North, which was a setup book. And a lot of people give this book flack, and I do, and this is actually one of my, one of the books that I would give flack a lot more to. It had an interesting conflict setup, but it was, that, that's just it, this book was just a setup. Like, not a setup like in the way early years was, the first book, like, the first book at least tried to have its own conflict with the tournament at Gorlin. This book was so much of a setup that I feel like Flanagan was really trying to pinpoint, was really trying to make the Siege of Massendal stand out. But this book, I'd rate out of 10, a 6. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, all right, here. It has its it has its good qualities, right? It has its um, good points in time. It, Alyssa and Will's relationship in this book really grew well. Um, Syrian, Syrian. I really like Syrian's, uh, Syrian's, um, what's his name? Yeah, I really liked his villain, the villain in this book. I really, really liked him. Uh, not Sir. Siren was the wasn't the villain. My bad. Karen was the villain, right? And because the for for the first time, Flanagan really tried to have a motive for the villain. He tried to make the villain sympathetic. Not in this book, but in Madison Doll, which is yeah, which is why I'm giving this book a six out of ten. Because it, it was really a, just a setup book. The cool concept of magic and intertwining, like fake illusionist magic and whatnot, into Ranger's Apprentice. That kind of got lost on me, but. Like, the character itself that was introduced because of the magic uh, spiel was pretty- was, was a nice character. And, yeah, I'd say Sorcerer of the North wasn't the best book, but Siege of Massendal had a lot of potential. And it made up for most of Sorcerer of the North. It wasn't- again, I'm not gonna say it's the best book in, in the series, because it had its problems. Like, the battle in Siege of Massendal, like, it's- it was good. It was just short. And- Will's final battle with Karith was good, um, in the sense that it felt realistic. Not- nothing too flashy or anything. Um, nothing- But the Kar- Karith was built up as a decent villain, like one of Flanagan's really, uh, first villains that you could kind of connect with. But he still wasn't exactly at that level yet, where- Aliss played it smart in this book, I liked how Flanagan wrote Aliss in this book. And I liked how Flanagan wrote Will in this book as well. Will, you could see his desperation. Yeah, all right. And Will and Horace's, um, like, working together, that was fun. Will fighting, Will doing a little skirmish with the Scotty, that was cool. And among a, a bunch of other cool moments in this book, but I'd say this book is an 8 out of 10. 
in this like this whole um i just i'll just call this part this overarching plot the mass and doll conflict right i'd say it's a solid seven out of ten because siege of mass and doll was an eight out of ten the sorcerer of north was six out of ten in my opinion yeah so i think that makes sense let's leave it at a seven out of ten not the best of flanagan's works but not the worst either actually source of the north in my opinion is the worst but anyways siege of mass and doll made up for that a lot so yeah all right getting into the cult conflict um yeah i mean this conflict was nice it, it had it was kind of the opposite of mass and doll it had a very interesting beginning kings of clonmel was a great book in my opinion uh it had some shortcomings like with uh not actually it actually didn't have that many uh it was interesting to know halt's past and whatnot i would have rated this 7 out of 10 a while ago just because i hadn't reread it recently but yeah now that i've reread it and i've actually enjoyed the um the spectacle that was the arena match for horus and how his name how his name from like three books what is it this is book eight in the series five books ago right how the um, book three came into play into kings of clonil and that was cool halt's past was cool this book was cool the cult conflict i could care less about but i mean like they weren't the most interesting uh villains that the group has faced but they were like they were there and it was interesting how they manipulated the government and the people to work against Clonmill and its king. But in the end, I'd give this book a solid 8 out of 10 just because the cult conflict wasn't too interesting and but the like the ending and everything in between that, the way it was set up, there were some funny jokes with uh Will in uh, the 5th and 6th book in the beginning of this book. And yeah, that was great. Uh 8 out of 10. But for Halt's Peril, you see a lot of people expected more from this and it's kind of the one <laughs> clickbait title of Flanagan series. Halt is in danger, Halt that's what Halt's peril kind of means. But like, you know Halt's not gonna die. You know that eventually will, I mean, I, it does play off for a bit that, oh, Halt is gonna die, right? And that makes you scared. But in the end, you kind of know that this is a kid series. It's, he's not gonna die, right? And that kind of works against Flanagan. It works well for Flanagan later that this is a kid series, but in, in that sense that death is not gonna happen. But in this book, uh, it doesn't work well for Flanagan. The in ending of the cult, cult, sorry, cult conflict and how it tied back into the fifth and sixth book was cool with the wizard coming in to help them out or the wizard in like quote unquote. But anyways, uh, the assassins that were going after Will and Halt were interesting for the time they were there. But I just wish more happened in that sense, because a lot of it was just kind of... Alright, assassins. assassins, um, they're gonna, they shoot Halt, Will shoots one of them back. Then it's just the whole, the rest of the, the big middle part of the book is Will and Horace frantically trying to figure out and search for a cure for Halt's disease. Then the second assassin appears, he's dealt with, and then he tries to come back, but he's dealt with once again. They give him the antidote before that, and they, and then he gives them the recipe for the antidote, and blah blah blah. Uh, and then. The cult ending, it was explosive, it was nice, but it just didn't feel as earned as it could have been because they didn't make as much of a presence as in this book as they had in the other book. So I'd rate this book a 7 out of 10. It's not bad, it's just not what I expected for this book. I felt this book could have been a lot more intense with like assassins come always on their trail, but like one conflict with them didn't feel earned and... It didn't feel like it was enough, I guess you could say. So this book, this whole series, I guess I could rate it a 7 out of 10. Um, I mean, like, 7, yeah, 7 out of 10. And contrary to, like, the early years, just because the early years, the second book really made up for the first book's um, shortcomings. But this this series, I really like Kings of Clonmel. I really do. It's just I do not like it as much as I... Uh, as much as I um, didn't like Halt's Peril. I was disappointed with Halt's Peril. Honestly, I thought it would be better, but it was still a good book in my opinion. So yeah, I'd rate this whole um, clan mill conflict, I guess, or cult conflict, uh, a seven out of 10. Yeah, The Emperor of Nihendra is a very self-contained book, but it's one of, it's the I think it's the best book in the Ranger's Apprentice series and one of Flanagan's best works in general. Um, it was well written with the character interactions were really well done. The two battles in this book were really well done the 
it was very much a Horace book instead of a Will book, but it's nice to see Will take the backseat from time to time. And he does have a presence in this book a lot, like, later. But Horace keeps it interesting and in the beginning, and Will comes in with everyone else in the end, and that's what makes it really uh, a book, a better done version of the seventh book, because of the fact that he's just grown. Flanagan's writing at this point in time is so much better than it was at that point in time. Even though that book was really great in its own right too, this book I say is a 10 out of 10, just because of the fact that the story was well written. The villain, I felt this villain felt more intimidating than Morgrath at some points in time. And Nihan Zhao was an interesting uh, country, interesting culture. Um, the characters introduced in this book really felt felt good. And yeah, everything about this book in general was amazing uh, to read for the first time. And it felt like it really could have been the climax to the series or where the series ended. But the series went on to continue into lost stories and whatnot. So I'll get into that in a bit. Yeah, but this book is a nine, ten, sorry, ten out of ten in my opinion, and it's the best book that Flanagan's written for the Rangers Apprentice series. I do not know how to rate this book. I, in general, I'd, it has some interesting stories, some stories I could care less about, but mostly it had one, a few really good stories like Will and Alice getting married, that was really nice, and that was a good ending point to the series, I felt like, or it could have been. But anyways, um, yeah, I'd say, I'd say I'd only rate that one for now because that felt like a good ending point to the series and the Tug story was really sad and um, the Crowley and Halt story led directly into early years which was really good. Uh, yeah, those three stories are good because they set up and or they end off like different points of the stories and people's stories. Yeah, I'd say this book I'd have to rate it on its own time with its own like individual stories rated on a different scale and rated differently than how I've rated the other books. But anyways, doing that book aside, we got the Royal Ranger, the first book, and it's called the 12th book of the series, but I think it changed just to just like the first book of the Royal Ranger series, which is the new Rangers Apprentice series. And it's about um, Madeline, right? And she's really, <laughs> this book is kind of like a Joel Ellie relationship from The Last of Us. It's really sad, actually. It's really depressing that and I'm really glad that uh, Flanagan t actually took this leap to kill off Alice. And, um, yeah, if you guys weren't already aware, spoilers, this is really, this is really, like, a spoiler review. If you guys haven't read this, these books, you should really read them. They're really good. But anyways, yeah. Um, Royal Ranger was good in its own right. It was kind of like a, re a remastered version of the first book. And Matt with, and instead of different protagonist, a more whiny protagonist, Madeline was... Alright, I did not like Madeline, but I slowly grew attached to her just because of the way he Flanagan made her redeemable in certain qualities and aspects. Will felt like the gruff old old um, master, and and that was kind of sad, you know, to see him gone so far from his old cheery personality, and to see him end up. I mean, but then in the later later now that I look back at it, it's understandable why he went out so much for revenge, and that made for an interesting conflict. For the first time, you see Will really angry with the world and with people. He's neglecting his duties as a ranger, and that's awesome because you can see how his character is growing, his character is changing because of different instances. And you know, it's hard reviewing, it's hard doing this in a kid series. It's hard killing off characters like these important characters, essential characters that you could have gotten in a happy ending from the lost stories, but instead you're introduced to a new conflict and new enemies new characters and you're passing the torch you know and you're killing off old characters and it gets sad it gets uh teary you get emotional right but in the end i think this book was really great it's not as good as like the other books it's not good as like 10 but it's it's really good introduction to the series uh to the new characters in the new series i'd say this book was all people give it a lot of flack for how depressing it was and how like oh it ruined their childhood i think it was really good and i think flanagan took a bold step and it paid off in the end i, I think it this book deserves an 8 out of 10 just because of how well it paid off and you know i might even put it at a 9 out of 10 just but it's just that i feel like Eh, actually, you know what? Yeah, 9 out of 10, because I don't know why I'm putting it at an 8 out of 10. This book was really good. Flanagan took a really big step, and it paid off in the end. There were some, there were some missed shortcomings to this book. There were some mistakes, but 
there's some flaws in the story, but anyways, it was, a, it felt like a really good book, and it felt like a good introduction to Maddie's character, who was, albeit annoying in the beginning of the book, but turned out to be an interesting character who you could root for in the end. And that's what made this book interesting. Folks, I think I'll be reviewing for this series, for this video, late, maybe later I'll do the Brother Band series, but, um, for now, Ranger's Apprentice, the Royal Ranger. All right, so my opinions on this book. A lot of people think it's a setup book, and it is. It really is a setup book. The Red Fox, Fox, sorry, Fox Clan was a really interesting, like it was a better version of the cults done, being done. And Flanagan addresses like women in power and whatnot in this book and in medieval times. And he does it in a, and not, and very bluntly. And sometimes it detracts from the story, but not, but not as much as you would think. And he doesn't. He doesn't mostly in a really nice way. Um, uh, Cassandra is really cool in this book. Madeline is really good in this book. And oh, hey, th this book has so many good. Uh, bro this book has so many good fan service moments. Madeline meeting the Brother Band crew. Thor, <laughs> Thorin, Thorin and Madeline like. <laughs> Thorin keeping out for Madeline, keeping covering Madeline's um, up skills and abilities. She becomes like a superhero in hiding in this book. It was so awesome to read that type of story. And I'm glad that Flanagan took that angle for this story because it made the book all that more interesting. And the twist in the end was, I mean, I predicted it, but a lot of, a lot of people didn't. It, I mean, like, for me, I've read a lot of media like this, so it was easier for me to predict. But yeah, I'll, I'll give it that. It was it was harder to predict than a lot of other things, like um, how he became the villain in the end, how he was the villain. Um, I forgot his name, though. <laughs> what is his name? <laughs> I always forget the names. All right. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Uh, what is his name? Da -na -na -na. Yeah, all right. Uh, but anyways, what the wh whatever the guy's name was, he was the guy who eventually. Ch uh, yeah, Dimon. Dimon. All right, the guy who eventually changed and went into and became the um the, the and turned out to be the Red Fox Clan leader. That was a cool twist. Um, yeah, a lot of things about this book are good. A lot of things about this book, people hate. And it's mixed. It's a mixed bag with this book. People think it's set up. I thought it was great for what it was. It kind of is a cliffhanger, and it's one of the books that I feel like you cannot. This book is the most tied into the second book that it's in because, like books like Kings of Quandle, you can just um, you can think about the cult clan is over because it's the this is the biggest hit cliffhanger that Flanagan has ever left us on, besides the second book. Um, and yeah, it's a really good book. I do not think that it deserves the the best, like, 9 out of 10 or 10 out of 10, but it was good in its own right, and I think it was a solid 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Now, for the Duel at Arluin, I like this book. I, I really, I like this book, but I felt like it was a bit too predictable, where you, where you knew it was going to end up. And maybe that's just the young adult. <laughs> maybe that's just me, because... It was just, I feel like at this point in time, Flanagan's writing got a bit formulaic. And, but still for what it was worth, his, this book was really good. Um, the writing in this book was fantastic. The character in this book and the way the conflict was dealt with was pretty good. The duel at the end was pretty, pretty good. Um, one of my favorite duels actually, Cassandra versus Dimon. And, and the way it was done was really good too. It really shows that Cassandra can stand there on her own and do and do what she has to do, right? Cassandra is um, Evanlyn, if you guys don't uh, know that, but you guys probably do if you're watching this video anyways. So yeah, this book was really, was good, although a bit, albeit a bit predictable, like you know what's gonna happen at certain points, in, a lot of points in time. You know that from the beginning of the book, you can see that, oh wait, so what's most probably gonna happen is they're gonna beat, Madeline's gonna save the horse and Gillen from their conflict with the help of the brother band and then they're gonna go to the tower and then they're gonna save cassandra but like it's hard because that's the kind of the narrowness of the situation that they're placed in in this book but it's nice to see madeline with the brother band again brother band crew again and using their help it's nice to see the crew doing stuff to save the kingdom once again and it was a good book i liked it a lot i liked the i mean 
You see, I like I like this book, but I do not. Again, once again, I don't think it deserves the the premium quality treatment like uh, the tenth book got because it's not. I mean, like it's not the best in the series. It, but okay, I'll give I'll give this these two books one thing. Without Will in them, without like the old series protagonist, they did fantastic with Madeline as a standalone character. And Flanagan really knew where to write her and how to write her, and how to write her in an interesting way, and how to make how to make her stand alone from Will. And it's like a kind of it's a Creed situation where you got Rocky for like the first two movies, but now Creed and the next few movies are I'm guessing is going to be alone, right? And hopefully they do that well too because I like those movies. <laughs> I like those movies. But anyways, yeah. Um, these two books were pretty good, standalone. I'd say both of them were an 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10. Not the best, but not, certainly the most solid of Flanagan's writing. writing. There's not a lot of, a lot bad in these two books. It's just that maybe by the time you read these two books, you've kind of grown out of his writing. You've kind of seen the formulas, and you've kind of seen where the story goes, like you kind of predicted. But that's, it's still all fun to read. It's still all, f it's all really nice to see the fan service that he provides by showing fl the brother band crew and Madeline meet, and that's really good. Yeah, so I'd give these both 8 out of 10s. Watching this video, um, this is kind of just a video for me to rant about these books that I love. I don't really hate any of the Flanagan books besides the fifth one, but <laughs> I mean, even that I don't hate too much. It's just it has it's, it has a lot of problems, but anyways, a lot of these books. This was my childhood growing up. I have all of these books bought, and I recommend that if you want to read any of these, you should. Brother Band is. I mean, you can start with any, but I'd say um, if you want to read it chronologically, read Early Years, and then read one through four Rangers Apprentice, then read <laughs> one through three Brother Band, then read or or you can do it the other way. Read one through four Rangers Apprentice. Read book seven Rangers Apprentice. And then read one through three brother band and then you can finish up the rest of the rangers apprentice series and then you can read just the will books and then you can read the um the rest of the brother band series uh and then once you get to the point of um like where the brother band series ends and where the rangers apprentice series ends you can read the royal ranger series in full and yeah it's a really good series. I hope you guys really read it and enjoy it. It's one of my all-time favorite series. And yeah, I'll see you guys in a later video. Thank you for watching.